five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome and thanks for joining me on About Space today. Well, a few days ago, I was looking for some information on another story when I came across an interview unknown to most. What I'm about to share with you may be disturbing. You may have been one of the reported 85% of Americans surveyed that heard the news within an hour of the accident. On January 28, 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster, an in-flight breakup of the spacecraft. You will hear a medical doctor, surgeon, and retired NASA astronaut who believes the Challenger crew survived the blast. Next on About Space Today. Are you ready to fly away on a dream vacation? For cruises and all-inclusive resort vacations, call D&D Cruise and Tours at 877-747-8631. That's 877-747-8631. And see us on Facebook, D&D Cruise and Tours, where your dreams become a reality. Welcome back. The mission carried the designation STS-51L and was the 10th flight for the Challenger orbiter. One of those who vividly remembers that day is our own Florida Space Coast editor, Don Meyer, a 28-year veteran of the space shuttle program. I was at the Kennedy Space Center that cold January morning for the Challenger launch. My work group and I watched from a slightly different spot than we usually did, since this was going to be the first launch from the newly refurbished Pad B, and we needed a slightly different viewing angle. The launch began as usual, a small shuttle riding atop a brilliant pillar of smoke and flame. The normal sound waves came reverberating back, shaking our bodies as we watched the shuttle climb. The announcer on the radio that we were listening to had just said that this was another perfect launch. And then we saw a bulge in the exhaust trail. All we saw was an expansion in the width of the exhaust plume. And then the guy next to me said, It's never done that before. My first thought was that either the wind had shifted slightly to cause this, or that the shuttle was doing its first ever return to launch site abort, which meant that it was jettisoning the tank and solid rocket boosters and was going to come back to the landing strip. But then the announcement came that the communications had been lost with the shuttle, and we knew that wasn't good. However, we could still hear the roar of the engines, so we figured that return to a ab launch site abort was in progress. And then they said, range safety has indicated that the shuttle has exploded. I heard people, and maybe it was me, say, oh God, no. And then we started to see the pieces fall. There were announcements that they were looking in the area for survivors. And I was completely stunned. Everything is kind of a blur there for a while as I made my way back to my office amidst all the people crying. None of us really knew what to do. It was just so devastating. I believe that the crew survived the initial breakup of the shuttle. The Space Shuttle Challenger disaster was a fatal incident in the United States space program in 1986, when Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight. At 73.191 seconds, a flash was observed between the ET and orbiter that was immediately followed by the start of total vehicle breakup at 73.213 seconds. By 73.6 seconds, the main engines were in automatic shutdown mode as a result of reduced propellant pressures. The last telemetry from Challenger was received 73.618 seconds after launch. And what was happening to the crew? They were still alive. He is a medical doctor, surgeon, and retired NASA astronaut, Dr. Story Musgrave, who believes the Challenger crew was still alive after the blast. You died when you hit the water. You know that. You think so? That's 
Or is it controversial? I don't know, sir. There's nothing controversial about that. No. It's hard evidence. Yeah, he died when you hit the water. Musgrave says it was the main fuel tank that exploded. The shuttle itself just broke apart. The crew compartment, with its seven living occupants, was intact. Challenge is fast. Launch is fast. It's bang, and then it's a two-minute ride down. And you're conscious. We know that. It took two minutes, 45 seconds, for the crew cabin to hit the water, traveling at 207 miles per hour. Musgrave is quite certain that they died when they hit the water. You could have lost consciousness at that altitude if it depressurized for a little while, but then, no, there's all kinds of evidence that you died when you hit the water. Medical doctor, surgeon, and retired astronaut, Dr. Story Musgrave. At the bottom of the ocean, investigators found that some of the crew's oxygen masks were turned on. Approximately 17% of the U.S. population witnessed the launch on live television broadcasts because of the presence of high school teacher Christy McCullough, who would have been the first teacher in space. Be sure to have your family and friends listen each Tuesday with me on About Space Today and on Fridays, America in Space with Rick Potluck from our Washington Bureau. And follow us on Facebook at aboutspace.today. And to all of our friends in the U.S. and around the globe, thank you for listening. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today. No, I didn't know any of the crew. However, it was just so traumatic. I mean, Krista McCullough, the first teacher in space, was aboard. So there were so many school children watching that day. And so they saw the shuttle explode live. I just can't imagine the impact that had on them. They may have lost consciousness due to lack of cabin pressure and oxygen deficiency before hitting the water at over 200 miles an hour, but I believe that initially they survived.